Hey everyone, I'm Chris, and if you've been watching this channel long enough, you know that I run the only online course for English as a Second Language, instruction in things like politics, history, social sciences, geography, and other related subjects. If you're interested in studying under me, uh, maybe because you're going into university to study these subjects, or for whatever reason you just need an English teacher, let me know. Send me an email at the email address in the description, and we'll start planning your courses. So today, we're going to define a couple of words that I think should be more widely understood and used in political discussions, but aren't. Words that should be useful for political discussions that you have, at least ones you have with me. The words are government and governance, and they are not the same. Let's start with governance. Governance is making and enforcing rules. That's about it. One form of governance is government. Government is when a small minority of the population monopolizes or has a monopoly on the making and enforcing of rules. You know what a monopoly is, right? Mono means one. It's where one person, or often a company, or another institution, like government, owns something exclusively. So no one else is allowed to make decisions over it. Government is a monopoly of several things, and making and enforcing laws is a big one. Because governments make laws for all their citizens to follow, and because they'll punish you if you don't follow their laws, all governments are inherently, it's like saying necessarily always, right, are inherently authoritarian. Like I said in my video on questioning authority, authoritarian means using force, forcing people to do things. If I told you what to do, threatened you, forced you, or hurt you, I would be guilty of authoritarian behavior. The adjective authoritarian can be contrasted with the word voluntary. Voluntary is just like saying not by force. It means um, if something affects you, you'd have to consent. You'd have to choose or agree to something. Um, or and, and if it's voluntary and you don't consent, then it doesn't happen. <laughs> I might start attending classes at a school voluntarily. Laws are not voluntary. Because we are accustomed to, it's like saying used to, the idea of government being everywhere, when we use the verb, which is to govern, it, as in a sentence like this one, that president governed better than his or her predecessor, uh, we mean acting by authoritarian methods. We mean politicians making laws and police punishing us if we don't follow them, or well, if they catch us. The reason I think it's important to make the distinction between government and governance is when we realize not all societies have government, that we can begin to consider all the possibilities of governance. We can begin to imagine all the different ways we can organize society. As you know, again, if you've been on this channel long enough, I like to put a lot of emphasis on critical thinking. And one way of thinking critically is using your imagination to consider other, better ways of doing things. Right now, if you break a law, 
you might have to go to a court where a judge you don't know decides whether or not you should go to jail. What if instead of that, a group of people from your community who knew you listened to everyone involved and then found the best way to make things right for everyone? Does that sound impossible? It was quite normal for people in places all around the world before states monopolized the law and the courts. Right now, the police are everywhere. Police have a monopoly on using violence against people. As such, they frequently use their authority to serve themselves, like maybe when they take bribes or extort money from people, uh, maybe, or when they help people they like but refuse to help people they don't like, or even killing people and getting away with it. What if instead of only a few people with all the power, how about everyone in society has equal power to enforce social rules? If someone's acting in a way that hurts others, it should be normal that any of us have the authority to stop them. We would be equal in our power to enforce rules. And actually, aside from the law, that's kind of how things work now. Think of a social rule. Not a law, necessarily, but a rule that people all follow. Imagine you were in a crowded street and someone started throwing rocks at windows for fun. Probably you and or other people would tell them to stop immediately, and you might even force them to if you had to. You can call uh, what, those are pe what those people are doing, you could call that antisocial behavior. Um, we don't always need violence to stop antisocial behavior. We just need to agree on what behavior we don't allow and how it's okay to stop it. So even when there is a government, we still have non-state governance. But even today, not everywhere in the world has government. Take the region of Zomia in Southeast Asia. Here's a map of it, but uh, you might want to Google it to know exactly where it is and, and what all that means. Millions of people live in the hills um, in this highlighted area here, away from the authority of the state. And they live in all these different communities. Some of the communities have elders or kings or something, but many of them are self-governing and independent. They decide things for themselves, voluntarily. All communities or groups could operate voluntarily, but not all of them do. So now you know governance is possible without government. How could another kind of governance improve your situation? Let me know in the comments. We'll review the vocabulary now, but just before we do, just, just a word of advice. It's usually useful when listening to or reading something for your English to listen to it or read it several times to really understand everything and uh, remember all the vocabulary. Um, so you might want to listen to this video again maybe three or four times. That's what I suggest. It's up to you. So, we started with a distinction between government and governance. So, governance is making and enforcing social rules. Government is one way of doing that. And uh, as you should remember, it's a very authoritarian way of doing it. It's purely by force. But it could be voluntary. Not government, but governance itself could be voluntary by choice. Um, government monopolizes governance, um, so it has a monopoly. Uh, we use the word inherently. I said government is inherently authoritarian, meaning 
always, necessarily. We also use the word consent, also an important word for me and for uh, any political context, any governance. Is it voluntary? If so, you've given your consent. Do you consent for someone to do this to you? If not, where do they get the authority to do it? I use the word accustomed to only so that I could teach you this phrase, accustomed to, instead of saying used to. They're the same. The verb, by the way, is to govern. Oh, and in case you didn't know this word predecessor in this phrase, that president governed better than his predecessor. Pre means before. Predecessor is the person who did your job before you. I said to make a distinction. It's important to make a distinction between government and governance. To put a lot of emphasis on, or to put some emphasis on, is like saying to focus on. Or you could say I put a lot of emphasis on politics, for example, because politics is something that's important. I said that the police, at least in many places, not everywhere perhaps, they extort money from people. They, they force people to give them bribes, you might say. And they get away with it because they have the power to do so. In other words, they, they can do something and there's no consequences for them. Nothing, nothing happens to them. Finally, we used antisocial, meaning antisocial behavior, which is something that uh, just that goes against the rules and customs that we're used to. So maybe attacking people could be antisocial behavior, or in, uh, in this example that I used, it was breaking windows. Good. So now see if you can explain the distinction between government and governance to a friend. See if you can think of other ways of governing society. Let me know if you have any good ideas.